Hello again. Um, I thought I would just quickly do a cover video um, regarding this Stirling engine machine. You know, it's been sitting in the background for so long, it's in working order. I thought I might as well just quickly talk about it and then I'll show you a video of its demonstration. I've already pre-recorded um, a video of it running the other day, so um, I probably thought I'd just use that video to demonstrate that because it's it's already a good video of it. So, what is this type of Stirling engine? Well, we've already explained what a Stirling engine is. Um, if you want to find out more how that works, you can check out my first video where in its most basic form, this is how a Stirling engine works. But for the too late and didn't reads, <laughs> um, how a Stirling engine works is that you have a hot um, flame heating a hot bulb which is called the displacer. Um, as the displacer moves, the hot air gets shifted down to the cold piston side. And what happens, once the hot working fluid reaches the cold side, it cools down and it contracts, creating a negative pressure effect against the piston. So it pulls the piston back up um, the displacer then shifts the working fluid back to the hot bulb to get heated up again. Rinse and repeat. <clears throat> uh, that's the most basic form of the Stirling engine. And that's exactly how this large beast works. Exactly the same, just scaled up and with many more cylinders to play with. So... The reason why I want to speak about this specific Stirling engine is because it is modelled after a real working design of an internal combustion engine that was experimented on in the early 1900s. And this particular design is called the squash plate engine, which is formerly known as the axile engine. And the reason why it's called the axle engine is because, as you can see, all the working pistons is installed proportionately or parallel with the revolving crankshaft, if you can see it at the middle. And what you and the rotating wobbly thing you see in the middle is the swash plate. So that swash plate is attached to the central crankshaft which is attached to this rotating propeller that acts as the flywheel to the machine. So that's what rotates along with the central crankshaft, which then rotates this wobbly swash plate, which is angled at 90 degrees for the famous Stirling cycle. <laughs> so it's also known as, affectionately, <laughs> known as the barrel engine or recent years as the Duke engine because um, about 10 years ago, another um, entrepreneurial company was experimenting with the Axile engine design, but I don't think that has gotten anywhere. <laughs> and I think a large part of that is due to the weak point the inherent weak point of this engine design, I'm guessing, is the linkages. The main swash plate and the main crank pins that's attached to it. With all these, um, well, in this case, the small miniature um, connecting rods. I could imagine over time, as these engines run, that probably puts a ton of stress onto the connecting parts. So I could imagine like in the real deals, they're gonna need to be encased in oil, literally full of oil. That's how the real engines work, hence why they've been enclosed in what's called 
a barrel-like casing because all the parts has to be flooded with oil to minimize the wear and tear that this particular design is subjected to. And I'm sure the same thing applies to your scaled down models as well. So as always with these model engines for lubrication, especially in this case, you want dry graphite um, as I've described in the last previous videos. But yeah, um, this particular design was experimented up until World War II when it was kicked to the curb for the turbojet engines because they were just a lot more efficient, a lot more reliable compared to these beasts. But you can find some examples of this design, the Axile engine. Um, there's also a butane powered internal combustion engine that's a four cylinder by um, a German manufacturer called Mehr Mechanic, and they sell a four cylinder um, butane powered, that is the same fuel that this uses to power that engine. With the same Axile design, but that goes for a lot of money. <laughs> but, um, I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've um, explained um, this to the best of my ability. Um, here's a video of it running. Thank you very much. And um, I'll leave a link down below um, so you can buy this on Engine DIY. Um, you can apply my discount code for your 10% off. And as always, I thank you very much for the um, support. And I'll see you in the next video.